All right, so I'm pretty excited about this one. Uh, today we're looking at average rates of change. Uh, the reason I'm excited about that is because if we look at average rates of change, pretty soon after that we can look at instantaneous rates of change. And once we start talking about instantaneous rates of change, we're talking about calculus. That's the stuff that Newton slash Leibniz invented and had a big fight over who invented it. Uh, but it's, it's just fantastic maths and it's really, really cool. It does all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, but it all starts here with average rates of change. So let's jump straight into it. So for this video, we're going to be using this graph. It's this function, 4x cubed minus 200x squared plus 2500x plus 2000. Gives us this nice, neat little thing here. Now for this, this is going to be the function of an aeroplane performing some sort of acrobatic maneuver. So at time zero, it's at this elevation, and then it flies up. At eight seconds, it reaches its peak, and then it starts swooping downwards towards the crowd. And at 26, it looks like it, at 25 seconds, it looks like it's about as low as it gets, and then it like swoops up into the air. Now, obviously, this function it can't go on forever because your space your plane will be a spaceship and go into space. So we're just going to deal with it from here at time zero to sort of here-ish at time 32, let's say. All right, so first thing we're going to do is start looking at average rates of change. That's the average uh, change in the plane's height for every second. All right, so I've just snipped this out, and let's look at the average rate of change of the plane's height between time two seconds and six seconds. So we want to know the average rate of change between time two and time six. This is a really straightforward question. All we need to do is draw a straight line between those two points and find the gradient of that line. Uh, you might remember gradient as rise over run. Now a formula for gradient, you should remember, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so let's find the average rate of change of this plane between uh, time 2 and time 6. So I'm cheating here. I've gone into GeoGebra and I've said 0.2, so at 2 seconds, uh, the height is 6232, and at 6 seconds, the height is 10664. Now I'm going to draw a straight line between those two points. That's going to give me my average rate of change if I find the gradient of that line segment. So quick screenshot, let's take it into OneNote and do our calculation. So here's our screenshot, sorry for the little arrow in there. Uh, M equals Y2, let's call this Y2, that'll make this X2. So Y2, 10,664 minus y1, this will make this y value y1, 6232, all over x2, 6 minus x1, this is x1, 2. Put it in your calculator, get an answer. Okay, and it's 1108. Now remember this video is about rate of change. Now a rate is something per something. Now in this case, it's raising, it's rising, I should say, this plane is rising by 1,108 meters per second. I have a feeling that's pretty unrealistic for a plane, but uh, it's a super duper plane, so I'm gonna roll with that. Okay, uh, now we need to take that one more step. I'm gonna do one more example here, but I'm not gonna be able to use GeoGebra. I'm gonna do all of this algebraically. So here's my question. Find the average rate of change, ROC, between time equals 10 and time equals 24. So time equals 10 is here, uh, looks like about 11,000, and time equals 24 is here, looks like about 2,000. But I'm using the word about, and I really can't use the word about, I need to be exact here. So, if I want to know what the exact y value is for this x value, so I know that the x value is 10, but I don't know the y value, and I know that this x value is 24, but I don't know the y value, I just need to sub it into my function, and I know what my function is. So, first I need to know what f of 10 is. 
Put that in your calculator. That gives us 1100. And I also need to know f of 24. Put it in your calculator. 2096. All right, so if I put these onto my thing here, I get, uh, oops, that should have an extra zero in there. I get 11,000 and I get 2,096. And then I'm just doing rise over run again to get myself an answer. M equals, that's an answer of negative 636. All right, so there's a straight line from that point down to that point. And the answer of negative 636 meters per second. So this time the rate of change is falling. That's why I've got a negative rate of change here. All right, there's average rates of change. Pick two points, draw a line between them, and that'll give us our average rate of change.